Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, where we explore the mysteries of faith and the stories of the divine. Have you ever wondered how different scriptures connect to each other? Today, we're diving into the fascinating worlds of the Quran and the Bible. Join us as we uncover the truths and the tales that have guided millions. Are you ready to embark on this celestial journey? Let's begin. The existence of a divine creator is a widely held belief, evidenced by the natural world around us. While the beauty of creation may point to a creator, understanding the nature of this being typically relies on revelations. Two of the most renowned texts in history, the Quran and the Bible, are believed by many to be divine revelations. Both texts assert their origin as the Word of God, offering insights into the character of the Creator. Let's look at some basic facts and beliefs related to each. The Quran. The Quran is a singular text, believed to be divinely authored without human collaboration. It comprises 114 chapters known as surahs and a total of 6,236 verses called ayahs, presented in a nonsequential order. The compilation of the Quran occurred posthumously to Muhammad's life, initially by Caliph Abu Bakr in 633 CE and later standardized by Caliph Uthman in 653 CE, during which period other existing copies were eliminated. The scripture is written in Arabic and holds a unique place in Islamic belief as Muslims consider it to be directly revealed to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel. The Quranic text asserts that its content is the unaltered word of Allah, pre-existing eternally as inscribed on a celestial tablet. This belief extends to the conviction that the Quran has been immaculately preserved since Muhammad's time to the present day. The Bible. The Bible is an anthology of 66 books penned by approximately 40 authors over a span of 1,500 years, dating from 1400 BC to 100 CE. It encompasses a variety of literary genres, including poetry, prophecy, historical accounts, epistles, legal texts, and apocalyptic visions. The original texts were written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Christians hold the conviction that these authors were divinely inspired and that the scriptures have been faithfully transmitted throughout history, acknowledging the possibility of minor transcriptional discrepancies. Clearly there is a profound difference between these two books, both in terms of how they were written, and in terms of what people believe about them. But despite these differences, if both books are ultimately from God, we should expect perfect agreement between them. What does the Bible say about the Quran? Nothing. The latest writings in the Bible predate the Quran by over 500 years, so there is no mention of the Quran in the Bible. What does the Quran say about the Bible? The Quran, which emerged centuries after the Bible, acknowledges many biblical figures such as Adam, Noah, Abraham, and others, and thus naturally references biblical texts. It specifically mentions the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, and the Gospel, which details the life of Jesus. These references underscore the Quran's recognition of earlier scriptures and its position within a historical continuum of religious texts. The Quran affirms the Torah and the Gospel as part of the revelations that preceded it, emphasizing a continuity of divine guidance through different eras and prophets. Let us look at some of the main differences between the Quran and the Bible. The Bible was revealed much before the Quran. Over time, the Bible's content is said to have been altered over 30,000 times. In today's day and age, nobody knows what the original form of the Bible was or if it still exists. To conclude, the word of Allah sent to Jesus has long been lost. On the contrary, the Quran was sent by Allah as the final book of guidance to humanity. It can be thought that the Quran encapsulates all the teachings sent by Allah SWT in the previous books. If something in the previous books opposes the Quran, it may be probable that it is an alteration. Allah's message has always been consistent and it is the existence of one true God. Allah SWT sent down the entirety of the Quran to Prophet Muhammad, PBUH, thus the Quran is in the first-person mode of speech. It can be thought that Allah SWT is speaking to the reader of the Quran through the Prophet Muhammad, PBUH. The Quran was compiled as it was revealed to the Prophet, PBUH, without the change of even a single letter or tense. The Bible, however, is a compilation of around 66 books. Christian belief states that the Bible was written by men who were incredibly close to God. Islamic belief is the opposite and states that the Bible, Injil, was sent down to the Prophet Isaas during his time. Similarly, Islamic belief also states that books were sent down by Allah to his messengers without any human intervention. One of the key distinctions between the Bible and the Quran is the portrayal of Jesus. In the Bible, Jesus is referred to as the Son of God. Conversely, the Quran and Islamic doctrine firmly deny this notion. A fundamental attribute of Allah in Islam is his absolute uniqueness, he neither begets nor is begotten. The attribution of human lineage to Allah is considered irreconcilable with Islamic teachings. The Quran narrates the miraculous birth of Prophet Isa, Jesus, born to Hazrat Maryam, Mary, as a sign of Allah's power. Mary conceived Isa without any human intervention. 
While some interpret this event to support the idea of Isa being the Son of God, the Quran explicitly refutes this interpretation, emphasizing the oneness and sovereignty of Allah. In non-Muslim traditions, it is commonly believed that Jesus was crucified and died at the hands of the Jews. The Quran presents a different account, negating the crucifixion. It holds that Prophet Isa, Jesus, was not killed but was instead raised to heaven by Allah. To those present, it seemed as though he had been crucified. According to Islamic belief, Prophet Isa remains alive and will return before the Day of Judgment, at which time the misconceptions regarding his death will be clarified. As mentioned previously, the current day Bible is a compilation of books written by men inspired by God. Thus the reader is open to interpreting it whichever way he likes. This has led to discrepancies in belief systems and has made the Bible a book that has infinite possible meanings. On the other hand, the Quran is an absolute word. The meaning of the Quran is the same for everyone. There are many different translations of the Quran which may be interpreted slightly differently from each other, however, the core teachings in all these translations are the same. This satisfies the purpose the Quran was revealed for, to act as the one perfect means of guidance for all of humanity. The Bible often describes humanity as inherently sinful, while the Quran offers a different perspective. According to the Quran, every person possesses an innate goodness and purity. It teaches that adherence to Allah's commands is essential for preserving this inner goodness. For instance, the Quran acknowledges that theft is sinful, aligning with the natural human inclination that taking what belongs to another is wrong. The Quran suggests that by following one's conscience and Allah's guidance, a person can maintain their inherent goodness. The Quran also recognizes that humans are fallible and allows for mistakes, assuring Allah's forgiveness for those who err. It further advocates for people to practice forgiveness towards each other, fostering a sense of communal well-being and nurturing the intrinsic goodness within all individuals. In closing, our exploration of the Quran and the Bible on Celestial Chronicles has revealed a tapestry of beliefs and narratives. But what does this mean for us today? How do these ancient texts influence our modern understanding of faith? And could the differences between them be a bridge rather than a barrier? As we ponder these questions, remember that the search for truth is a journey we all share. What are your thoughts on the divine revelations discussed today? Comment below, and let's continue this celestial conversation. Thank you for watching Celestial Chronicles. Until next time, keep seeking, keep questioning, and keep the chronicles of your own journey alive.